All right, I have cut all the slots and very similar to the diagram that I saw in Stephen Turnbull's book, tried to make it to scale so that way my 25 millimeter Zvezda figures can shoot along this triangular opening, which works really well. So getting into painting now, um, most of what I do to paint these are pretty much washes and dry brushing. And doing those two things together, I will show you how to create a stone wall, a board platform, a plaster and lath wall, and a tiled roof. I like to do things inexpensively, so these are dollar acrylic paints, and I've been using these for 40 years. And uh, basically, I need a black, I need a charcoal gray, a bleached sand color, a linen color, a burnt umber or brown umber, and then uh, kind of an ivy green. And this will make up pretty much the... Uh, Oh, and I also need honey brown. And this is all I need. And so I'm gonna, I use a wet palette and I'll put my paints out and then I'll show you how I do washes and dry brushes in order to, uh, to make this wall. So I will paint this one from beginning to end, but usually when I have several that I'm doing, I'll do this assembly line style. Um, but for this video, I'm just going to show you how to do this one and hopefully you can see quickly how to do this and make your own walls. So I'm going to start with a black wash. Um, and I use pretty beat up brushes when doing this because this isn't necessarily real precise. This is terrain. It's not competitive painting with figures. Um, but mostly it is to create a more natural ambiance on the battlefield. So that way you can really get into the game itself. So using a black wash will create all of the um, crevice, crevices and recesses. And where I had drawn all my, um, my ink lines, I'm now filling in with a black wash. Now I'm going to use the burnt umber and I'm going to use the burnt umber on both the tile and the board. Anything that's wood and that gives wood a very nice base color and then if I want I can make this a little bit more um, different colors of wood, like I, I did that on my gate. I used some other more medium browns and some reddish browns um, to do a little bit of dry brushing. The balsa wood really soaks up the paint. And so I, uh, I don't want it necessarily a nice even color because it is wood and I want it to look a little weathered in places, and a little bit darker in others that helps bring out grain and uh, kind of surprising how making it a little bit more beat up looking um, gives a little bit more realistic texture and color. I also don't want to use too much water because balsa wood will swell and twist and get all kind of funky shaped. So I want to make sure. With the cardboard, I like to go with the green of the um, what will become the tiles. In Japan, they have lots of different color tiles. It can be reds or browns or grays or light colors. And I've kind of been on a brown kick lately. And in order to bring out the contrast, I'll use the honey brown on the ridges to give it the uh, raised and shadowed look. The wall itself being a, a lath and plaster wall, the plaster is not a perfect white. Um, I need to give some strength to the wall itself, so I'm going to use honey brown as a wash underlayment underneath. Um, and what that'll do is 
strengthen the cardboard, but it'll also create a um, somewhat of a reddish brown sort of look underneath. I know it's coming out sort of an orangey brown, uh, but as it darkens, it gives the uh, wall itself more, you can almost see like laugh underneath it because when I use the off white color to, uh, to become like the plaster, it'll, um, some of this kind of orangey brown will come through and it'll look, it'll look pretty cool. I'm gonna have to be a little bit thicker because I have numbers on my <laughs> cardboard. That's no problem. That'll cover up. If anything, if it, you know, some of the numbers from the Amazon box come through, uh, that could be kind of interesting because that can make it look like there are some supports sticking through or um, other structures that are underneath. Again, I don't want to use a lot of water because I don't want to distort the shape of the cardboard, cardboard wall. All right, now that uh, things are dried, I spent time doing the rock walls on my other on my other pieces. Now I'm gonna start doing the dry brushing. And one thing to keep in mind is how um, the majority of the rocks that were used in walls are going to be granite and basalt, which have a lot of variety of color and texture. And the Japanese did cut corner pieces to fit very nicely. They cut frontal pieces to fit very nicely, but uh, they also did not use mortar. So by not using mortar, they were proficient in how they stacked the rocks. So to get like basalt, basalt is kind of a grayish uh, color. So I'm gonna mix some of my linen and some of my charcoal gray, and then really dry that brush off. Kind of hard to do on a wet palette, but now I'm gonna I'm gonna be streaking this fairly lightly, and by streaking this lightly, I'm gonna try and bring out more of the lighter textures of these rocks. So the crevices have been blackwashed. So I'm gonna go pretty quick. Not, not really emphasizing too much of color. If there's variation in your color, that's good because rocks are, rocks are gonna vary. The important thing is that the light and the dark, it helped bring depth to what you're looking at. And your brain will pick up on that. And the more light and dark we see, the more our brain sees, oh, that's three-dimensional shape. Now, using this lighter color, I'm gonna go in areas where the sun would be a little bit more, which would be under this, near to the bottom edge. So very distinct corners and distinct edges. Now the walls, uh, are going to be a plaster. So I'm going to use my linen color and I'm going to use it almost like a wash and I want to make sure this is pretty uniformly spread. I don't want it too much on the wood. But it is like a plaster and plaster is not always texture wise perfect. I'm gonna leave the recesses of the windows dark because I don't wanna draw attention to the structure of the cardboard. And so by not painting them, that'll allow that to remain dark. And so the players won't notice it as much. They'll see the openings. I'll do the same thing on the other side. There. 
So now that's the initial stages of the uh, lath and plaster wall and the initial look of the rocks. And now I'm gonna dry brush that roof. All right, I'm gonna use the honey brown. And by using the honey brown, I'm going to now start bringing attention to the top of the tiles. And by bringing attention to the top of the tiles, I'm showing where light is striking them. And by showing where light is striking them, it'll now start to give that appearance of that rounded tile roof that is so common to Japanese architecture, uh, particularly in traditional housing and traditional buildings. There. So now I've brought the lighted tops of the tiles out and that's gonna give them more of that sort of terracotta, muddy brown look. I was looking at this board and I thought, well, it's a kind of a dark brown, but I think it needs some depth. So I've decided to use a little bit lighter, redder brown, and I'm gonna wash this in and try and bring more of the wood color out of that balsa wood. And this is a nutmeg, nutmeg brown, and this, should give it almost like a stain look. So the depth of the burnt umber, now with this nutmeg brown, I can get more of a differentiation of the wood from the rest of the wood. So that way it looks different. And I can use water to thin it and darken it in some places, make it a little bit thicker. So that way there's more texture and contrast. But it is, when we differentiate colors, it catches the eye. And when it catches the eye, then it looks more realistic. By doing that, I now have the darker burnt umber as depth, but the lighter red to bring out more of the texture of the wood itself and to give it more of almost like a cedar, reddish wood sort of appearance. All right, now I'm gonna get back to the lath and plaster wall. Plaster is a little bit whiter than this, but it is textured, so I'm gonna use this, more of this bleached sand. Um, and I'm just gonna go over this to start working it in to give it more of the white plaster look. And if there is variation in depth and structure, that's okay, because your brain will say, oh, parts of these are raised, so it's not a smooth wall, which, you know, considering this is a 1500s era castle wall or fortress wall um, or a quickly built wadju, it's, uh, you don't have to worry about it being real precise. All right, now I'm gonna start giving contrast to my stones. In order to do that, I'm gonna be using lots of different colors. Um, in some cases, I'm going to be using, you know, linens and tapping that around to give some contrast and just randomly placing those. And by doing that, it'll bring out the structure in some of the rocks and leave others a little bit more in a darker recess. And if I get the mixed colors on my on my brush, I don't really care. The bleach sand is pretty bright, so I always want to make sure I blur that a little bit. And I try to keep that one where sunlight would be shining. there. 
and there we have it. So this wall is finished. You can see the structure and contrast in the rocks and the stones. Um, a little bit with moss, I'm gonna blend that in a little bit more. Um, and this was styrofoam and leftover cardboard and balsa wood. And now I have the samurai wall with gun parts.